Welcome to Electron Online and continuing with the technique of partial fractions for integration, let's take a look at the different types of problems you can run into. And the biggest challenge of doing partial fractions is to recognize the different kinds of techniques you need to apply to the different kinds of problems. So here I have before you five very typical examples of what you would need to do in order when you get something like this underneath a radical, underneath an integral sign. For example, if you'd ask you to integrate this or this or this right here or this right here, how would you do that? What technique would you use to get there? Well, it turns out, let's analyze the different types of fractions you can end up with that you need to integrate. The first one is the type where the denominator is a product of linear factors. So if you end up with something like this in the denominator and you can then factor it to make it look like this, notice that each one of these factors of the denominator is a linear function of x. So that's why we say we have a product of linear factors, which means that this which is the fraction, can be written like this with the denominator in here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write this as a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 2. In other words, if the denominator is a product of linear factors, you can simply then write it like this, like partial fractions. And then you have to determine what a, b, and c are equal to. a, b, and c here will then be constants. And once you figure out what the constants are, for a, b, and c, you can then integrate each of these separately, readily, much more easily so than trying to integrate something that looks like that. So the first case is the case where the denominator is simply a product of linear factors. Notice that this right here is what we have over here. This can be factored to look like that. The second type is where the denominator still has linear factors, but in some cases the linear factors are repeated or duplicated. For example, if we have something that looks like this, we have x times x minus 1 quantity to the third power, so that actually looks like this. So if this is your denominator, then the way you're going to write it out as partial fractions and then determine what a, b, c, and d are equal to is notice that first you write a over x, then b over the factor x minus 1, then c over the factor x minus 1 squared, and then d over the factor x minus 1 cubed. So that's a special technique that we use when the denominator has duplicate linear factors. All right, the third type that you can run into is when the denominator has distinct quadratic factors. So they're not linear here, they're not quadratic. For example, well here we have something that looks like that. If you factor out an x, you get this. So this is a linear factor of x, but this is a quadratic factor. So this is x to the second power. So therefore, for the first one, we write a over x, just like what we would do over here or over here. So you simply write the constant a over x. But then the next factor in the denominator is a quadratic, so therefore you write bx plus c in the numerator over your denominator x squared plus 4. So whenever the denominator has a quadratic factor, you need to write something in the numerator in the terms of a constant times x plus another constant. If they're a, b, c, d, or e, we don't care. a, b, c, d, or e simply are representative of a constant number, just a number, but we need to write this in the numerator to adjust for the factor. It makes a lot of sense because if you have an x squared in the denominator, you want something with x to the first power in the numerator, so that can be the differential of the denominator, so you can integrate it. So that's the reason why we do that. The fourth example is where we have still quadratic uh, factors in the denominator, but they're repeated. For example, what if you end up with something that looks like this? Notice we have x cubed, then that is linear, but it's repeated three times. Here we have a quadratic factor, and here we have a quadratic factor that's repeated. So what does that look like? Well, for the linear factor of x, we have a over x plus b over x squared plus c over x cubed. Remember, when something is repeated, like it is over here, we have to repeat it every time increasing the exponent of the factor until we reach the exponent that we have here in the denominator and we write b, c, and d on top. Here we have the same thing but we start with a over x, b over x squared, c over x cubed. Now the next one is a quadratic factor. So there we have to do the same that we did over here which is here dx plus e over the quadratic factor. And then we have a quadratic factor squared. So we write it first to the first power with fx plus g and then we do it again the second time with an hx plus i. If this had been x squared plus 2 cubed, then we of course need plus uh, what's after h, i, j, and k, jx plus k over x squared plus 2 cubed. So that's how we would just continue until we have all the factors accounted for. 
And then there's a case sometimes when you realize that the order of the highest, the highest order in the numerator is larger than or equal to the highest order in the denominator. So in this case, we have x to the fifth in the numerator, x cubed in the denominator. What you then recommended to do is to first do a long division like we did here. So you take the, the numerator divided by the denominator. We have an x squared plus the remainder 2x squared plus x plus 5. Then you rewrite it as the, the divisor here or the, sum, the result of the division, I should say, plus the remainder over the, um, over the denominator. And then you go ahead and use the technique somehow, one of these techniques right here, of course, what you have to do here first is factor it, find out what the factors in the denominator are, and then you go ahead and then use partial fractions for this part only. Of course, this would be very easy to integrate at that point. So those are the five general cases that you will generally run into when you try to do this technique, partial fractions. And so the, really, the key to success is to realize well, what kind of problem am I, am I dealing with here? Am I dealing with just the product of linear factors, or the linear factors that are repeated, or the distinct quadratic factors? Are they repeated quadratic factors, or do I first apply long division exercise before I try to find the, the factors in the denominator? So once you have that down, then the rest is kind of straightforward. So now what we'll do is we'll show you an example of each one of those, and then what it all comes down to is determining what these constants are equal to in this case. Of course, when you have something like this, this may take you a while, but it's doable, and so I'll show you examples of how to do that.